So far on the channel, we have covered all manner of weird and wonderful RPGs, from the renowned and goofy. Don't worry about me. There's life in me still. To the most unintentionally hilarious. But today we dive deeper into the rabbit hole of strange and mysterious than we have ever come close to being. To take a look at without a doubt the most insane RPG ever released. Releasing on Steam in 2015 by single developer Mason Lindroth. Jumping into its burrito launching. Randomly terrifying. Point. Uh, uh, what the hell is that? Jesus Christ! Uh. And consistently mind-shattering world. My name's Mitch Mannix, and this is Hylix. Hylix begins with a bit of exposition around the game's setting, with intriguing statements such as the people sniff thanks to a skeleton, and a modified product greatly impedes the lives, as well as some information around the game's main antagonist, Gibby King of the Moon, who levitates a sound despite the shrunken biscuit truth, something that I feel that some Viagra would be effective in clearing up. After the insanity of the lore dump, we are welcomed to Act 1, a screen that I totally didn't sit in front of for an age before realizing that I could move the lever and actually start the game with the help of, uh, uh, Captain Traffic Lights. Finally in the game proper, we meet our main character. This haunted moon demon looking fellow is Wayne, the owner of a modest home and a man that has impressively learned the art of using a fortnight dance as a mode of transportation. Flailing about his home, we get a chance to meet some of his house pets as well as get to explore a little as well as in Hylix getting to know that items can be found in unexpected places, finding a warm burrito in the toilet, while vehemently remaining happy to not know why it is indeed still warm. On our way out, we take a look at the TV in Wayne's home, and are granted a new ability, Ablative Hollow Pleather, with Hylix seemingly taking a leaf out of Project Zomboid's book and granting player skills. I learned from the TV. Grabbing some toilet paper and activating a crystal, we take our leave into the game's world, or Wayne's world. At this stage, we just don't know. A number of animals and a disturbing boogieing neighbor inhabit Wayne's grounds, with the latter informing us of a city to the northeast, of course while still including a bunch of insane nonsense along with it for our trouble. Grabbing some veggies from the garden, as well as of course Wayne's trusty trash can lid, we venture further into what I can only describe as some sort of cursed modern art exhibition, or maybe just a modern art exhibition, with a number of the game's early mobs roaming around looking for a fight, guarding what looks like some sort of monument to a bellend god. Joking aside, if it's not clear already, Hylix's art style is trippy to say the least, and as we'll see as things unfold, filled to the brim with unexpected insanity. Working our way around the maze, we encounter a roaming ostrich enthusiast, clattering into us and beginning our first combat encounter. Hylix adopts a turn-based combat system typically seen in JRPGs, with a chance to attack directly in probably the most sassy way I think I've ever seen. Use items and the game's unlockable abilities to take on the lance foes. However, it seems like poor Wayne here is bitten off a little more than he can chew, getting instantly demolished by one of the failed parachute enjoyers in the very first attack phase. What have you done, Wayne? This Cathedral of Confusion is the afterlife where a rather kind nearby fish gives us permission to crash on his sofa to restore our health and magic, after which we begin investigating the time machine garbage disposal, which does nothing currently, as well as speaking with another fish, who tells us that we will have access to an executive balcony once we have died a total of three times, this being one of a few mechanics that Hylix adopts that adds some interesting spice into its progression, as we'll see more of a little later. After exploring more of the afterlife, we check a statue, grabbing ourselves a hot dog, and head into the nearby cave, ready for whatever awaits us. Okay, first of all, I was wrong, and secondly, now I feel stupid for underestimating this game. What is that? A, 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 a TV antenna dancing around in a towel. The dancing Pope of Cable asks us to find some dynamite to allow him to blast through the wall to uncover a TV set, or possibly one of his disciples. One can only speculate. Activating another crystal, we learn that these are actually the game's checkpoint system that allows us to teleport to the activated crystal from the afterlife after being defeated. A welcome addition, as I have a feeling this will be happening often. Taking the alternative direction from our hero Wayne's house, this time we are introduced to another JRPG staple, the overworld map Bird's Eye View, scaled down as we travel to get a good look at some of the explorable locations in the game, with our first stop being the city that our strange neighbour mentioned earlier, a much larger location filled with a number of shops, as well as of course insane objects, security systems, and inhabitants. 
but with only a measly 53 bucks to our name, we only have enough after visiting a number of the game's shops to grab ourselves a frozen burrito and head north to the city to look for ways of growing in power, getting a chance to take on some more foes while roaming around Mount Garbrook, which unfortunately goes the same way as our previous battle, even after the Hail Mary attack launching our recently purchased frozen burrito right into one of the Cheeto Warriors' face, leading to a return to the fish-infested halls of the afterlife. Clearly a radical shift in tactics is required. Returning to the mountain, ducking and diving the mobs, we encounter an artifact seeker, who at this moment is seeking none other than the coveted ancient treasure, a paper cup. This being one of Hylic's few, but of course highly weird and wonderful quests. With this one tasking us with resting in this fellow's nearby tent, where along with getting a clue as to the location of the elusive paper cup, we end up in the lair of the Brain Sage, who grants us a token and informs us of a very Legend of Zelda-esque side quest seeking out the other most likely just as gross sages, to obtain their tokens also. And whilst making our way back thinking that these sages would have a ways to go if they are going to overthrow the reigning champion of Nightmare Fuel Sages, thanks to those contained in the aforementioned Zelda's N64 debut. And if you don't think this is that bad, just imagine it floating above you while you're trying to sleep, just laughing in your face. Now back amongst the field of Cheeto men, we track down the paper cup and hand it to our new friend, who kindly walks us through another of Hylix's LSD-tinged RBG features. Finding paper cups and using them at water dispensers will provide a permanent increase to the will stat used for casting abilities, a much needed boost to our combat efficiency. To go along with the additional party member as this quest unlocks the game's first companion, with our friend offering to join us on our adventures. Finally, with a chance to put up a fight, we quickly set to work taking down the Coneheads and Cultists firing off abilities such as our space shurikens, and waving around what looks like the satanic bible for vegans, and even putting that hot dog to good use, healing up our small party to grab victory from the jaws of defeat, in a battle taking place in a parking lot for, uh, well, well. Now with a much more formidable force, this allowed us to truly explore some of the game's zones, and with it opportunities to loot all manner of weird and wonderful objects. Even further investigating the Belen statue to transport us to an entirely new overworld, where we and our duo encounter our first boss fight. Of course, in typical Hylix fashion, against what looks like a Batman action figure stuffed into a firework, backed up by an army of bootleg stuffed Timons from The Lion King. It's that weird kid from Toy Story. I knew it! I knew it! This whole time! It's been him! Little bastard. <clears throat> anyway, Hylix features a number of bonkers looking boss encounters, and while not exactly being the most challenging up until taking on the King of the Moon himself, does enough to provide that RPG feeling of grinding through mobs to grow in power, and enhance the desire to explore and uncover more strange and sometimes powerful alternative abilities, whilst wondering what kind of craziness will be waiting in the deeper depths of this mad world. Damn it, I must have been so close. Damn you, cursed. Thanksgiving turkey trumpet. The world itself is split into a number of small islands, with modes of transport to access them split across the game's three acts. First unlocking a ship to whiz around the land's ports, and later on an airship to gain access to any island a haunted moon demon looking fellow like Wayne could desire. The game's locations themselves are one of Hylix's highlights, truly not knowing what you will end up walking into, from trippy as hell versions of RPG mainstays such as a graveyard, to a lab disturbingly housing bathtubs and glass containers of who knows what all decked out in the game's mind-twisting claymation art style. A while into the game I had seen so many crazy looking surroundings I was sure that I had seen it all, when the game dropped us into a live performance being carried out by my now four-person strong team, with each member of the team on a separate instrument, and upon interacting with them having them lay down some tunes. That's, uh, as disturbing as everything else. Well, considering that this is technically Wayne's world, it would be rude not to, right? Yeah, I can work with that. Show 
Self-indulgent nonsense aside, the music in this game is indeed cursed sounding, but it's paired with the game's visuals and art style perfectly. Oddly played discordant scores that just add to the game's feeling of a psychedelic fever dream. Hylix has a modest amount of weapons, armors, and items that provide buffs and resistances, so although far from being as in-depth as most JRPGs, still allows the player to set up a loadout to combat a particular boss that, for example, uses a lot of blinding or paralyzing attacks during the encounter. Typical weapons and armors such as axes and bats, of course, coupled with bonkers items such as toilet paper and cellophane. Hylix also has a number of additional mechanics for progression, such as a clever system of feeding meat found from defeated enemies into that time machine garbage disposal thing we found earlier in the afterlife, allowing players to cash in their victories in defeat and come back stronger. The complete opposite of the nonsense they pulled in Dark Souls 2, which I still haven't forgiven them for. Tracking down the paper cups and water dispensers for more magic, and even seeking out animal food to obtain items from animals in and around Wayne's house. On the surface, Hylix looks like it was cobbled together simply to throw some weird and wonderful artistic creations into the face of its players. But now after finishing the game, it's clear to me now why it has not only created a bit of a cult following, but also a sequel. Drop a like on the video if you would want to see a video on that one. The game adopts some tried and true RPG mechanics to keep the player busy and engaged during its journey through easily the most insane RPG world I have ever experienced. Never knowing what you will encounter next, I'm looking forward to unleashing that next crazy looking unlocked ability. For the pocket change asking price, this RPG in its 4 to 5 hour descent into madness is one that I won't be forgetting anytime this century. Thank you so much for watching this ridiculous adventure. Have you played any absolutely insane or hilariously goofy RPGs? Either way, as usual, I'm keen to get your thoughts down in the comments. And if you're into RPGs, MMOs, or hey, just ridiculous videos like this, you're in the right place. So don't forget to subscribe for a whole lot more. I want to give a massive shout out to the channel supporters who help in keeping the content coming. If you're interested in exclusive full-blown standalone videos, behind the scenes moments, and a whole lot more extra perks, the link to the channel Patreon page is down in the description. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, Jesus, calm down! Oh dear lord, what have I done? Standing upon his steed like a segne, the former being mostly due to his reputation of being slightly less than accurate with his spells for unknown reasons.